there, folks? Have you heard the news? Hey there, folks. Have you heard the news? This week we're talking all about all about the blues. That's right. This week we are talking about the blues. The blues, one of the great American styles, forms, genres, types, I don't know, whatever you call it. The blues, we're going to get into the history, where it came from, what it is, and maybe by the end of today, you'll be writing your own blues lyrics. So on to the history of the blues. Okay, well, before we go on to that, you probably all noticed, yes, I got my hair cut between the beginning of class and now. So I was going to redo the beginning of the class, and then I thought, I'm going to leave it in because this is such a crazy year. I could change shirts like that. I can get my hair cut just like that. So anything can happen. It's kind of a crazy year. So, all right. So back to the blues. The blues goes back to the days of slavery. Um, the slaves sang songs in the fields when they were working. So they not only sang spirituals, which was last week's topic, they also sang work songs or field haulers while they were working in the fields. Um, this was important. It well, for one thing, it helped them stay together so they could all work at the same pace if they were working to a beat. Um, and also, it served an important purpose. It helped make their work, I don't want to say more pleasant because slavery was not pleasant, but it helped them express themselves and maybe take their mind a little bit off the fact that they were working in the fields all day long. So now some slave owners claimed that because their slaves were singing, they must be happy. No, well, that is definitely not the case. The fact that the slaves were singing does not mean that they were happy to be slaves. And of course, as we know, so many of them tried to escape, so that alone should be evidenced that they were not happy. All right, so we're going back to the very roots of our country, actually, the United States. Um, we're going to Mount Vernon, which was George Washington's estate. Now, George Washington, yes, the father of our country, the very first president of the United States, as we know, was a slave owner. So we're going to hear some people talking about songs that the slaves might have sung at George Washington's plantation. And um, now I'm trusting that the people in charge of Mount Vernon right now took great care to find as close as they could songs that the slaves actually sang. They probably did a lot of research. Um, although nothing was written down, we have no recordings from back then because there were no recordings. But I'm trusting that the Mount Vernon people really took their care to find as authentic as we can songs from back then. Now, you're going to hear several songs. The one I want you to really pay attention to is one called Ho Emma Ho, because that's an example of a work song. And you'll see them hoeing in the fields as they sing the song together. So here we are, off to Mount Vernon. You would have heard music in the mansion, but you would have also heard music on the outlying farms. Songs and stories were a vital part of the daily lives of the slave community at Mount Vernon. By 1799, there were over 300 enslaved African Americans who lived and worked on the estate, which was over 8,000 acres. I had a chance to speak with Larry Earl, a prominent historian and musician. Sit down and take your rest. Well, you got to lay your head upon my Savior's breast. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Oh, my Savior and my God. Go ahead, go sit down. Sit down. Oh, sit down. Sit down, mother, sit down. Sit down and take your rest. Well, you got to lay your head upon my Savior's breast. I love the Lord. 
How important was the music in the lives of slaves who lived and worked at Mount Vernon? Oh, it was extremely important, not only for the enslaved community here at Mount Vernon, but also for the enslaved population throughout North and South America. Music is something that they would use to survive in slavery. Music would be used to take their minds off the, the, the work of the day, but it also allows them a way to express themselves. So the music takes on religious purpose, it takes on satirical purposes. It's really important for their daily existence and survival. Hole in a hole, you turn around, dig a hole in the ground. Hole in a hole. Well now, Emma, you've got rotten teeth. Hole in a hole, you turn around, dig a hole in the ground. Hole in a hole. Well now, Emma, they must be wooden teeth. Hole in a hole. Can you tell us about Ho Emma Ho? Sure. Ho Emma Ho is a great song. It's a classic call work song where you can imagine the enslaved community out in the fields doing their work um, to till up the soil. They all have hoes and they're trying to get the work done. Well, in the call and response fashion, Ho Emma Ho, there's the caller who knows the verse and there's the responders who call to help keep the pace of the work. And that's the call and response. And that would help set the pace of the work, would make sure that the work gets done, and in the enslaved community, if all the work's done, the mass is happy, no one will be sold, we'll get our rations on time, we won't work ourselves to death, because we're only working as fast as Ho Emma Ho will allow us to, and we keep that song nice and slow. I've heard slaves use songs in codes to either make fun or give directions for escape. Is this true? Oh, very much so. Uh, there's a, a song that I love called Lost John. And you'll have to help me out with this one because okay. it's great. Because if you didn't know the story of Lost John, if you repeated the song and listened closely, you could hear how Lost John escaped. So sort of repeat after me. It goes, one day, one day. One day, one day, I was walking along, I was walking along, and I heard a little voice, and I heard a little voice, like a turkey through the corn, like a turkey through the corn, well, it was old lost John, it was old lost John, with his long clothes on, with his long clothes on, well see that tells a story, because we first know, how did lost John make his escape, he went through the corn, nobody can find him in the cornfield, but listen to this part, he had a heel in front, he had a a heel in front and a heel behind and a heel behind I said you couldn't hardly tell I said you couldn't hardly tell which way he was going which way he was going now that's pretty funny because the story says that lost John he got two pairs of shoes his old pair of shoe and his new pair of shoes that he got annually he took the, took the heels off his old shoe and put them on the front of his new shoes so when he walked he had a heel in front and a heel behind and you couldn't hardly tell which way he's going. <laughs> Perfect. Great for telling how Lost John made his escape from slavery. A heel in front and a heel behind. Wow, just goes to show that some of the slaves were really smart about how they escaped. Now, we don't know if it's a true story or not, but it's still a pretty cool story. Now, did you hear the term call and response? That is in a lot of the songs that the slaves sang. One person would be the caller, and another person or group of people would do the response. Sometimes there would be the call and the response was an exact echo. Sometimes the response was something different. Now the blues has both. So we're going to get into the form of the blues in just a little bit, but we have to skip a few hundred years. The slaves were freed. A lot of them kept working as sharecroppers, which meant that instead of working as slaves, they not being paid at all, they worked for very little money instead. So they were continued to work mostly in the rural South. There's several places where the blues became big. Texas, Louisiana, the Carolinas, and the Mississippi Delta were some places that were important for the blues. So people kept singing, but now they were free to gather. So often they would gather together and dance and sing. And so that's one way that the music spread. Now again, we don't have any recordings from back then. We don't know what it sounded like. But they did go out dancing. Now, this man, W.C. Handy, is often thought of as the father of the blues. Well, he didn't invent the blues, but he was perhaps the first to write down the blues. So the story goes that in 1903, he was at a train station. Now, he was the leader of a dance band. He knew how to read and write music and all that. But apparently he fell asleep 
at the train station on this wooden bench. When he woke up, he heard a guy playing guitar next to him and uh, using like a knife blade against the strings to make some different sounds. And he thought, wow, this is some really weird sounding music. So anyway, I'm sure he kept hearing more of that music. And finally, in 1912, he wrote down the first published blues piece that we know of called the Memphis Blues. And then two years later, he wrote a blues, wrote it down, I don't know if he actually wrote it, called the St. Louis Blues. Now, some people say St. Louis, some say St. Louis. I'm going to say St. Louis because Bessie Smith, who recorded this song in 1925, she sang St. Louis. So um, you're going to hear a recording very soon of Bessie Smith singing the St. Louis Blues with actually Louis Armstrong playing on the cornet. It's a kind of trumpet. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk about the lyrics. So we talked about call and response, call and echo, call and response. The blues have both. So here's a really important thing about the blues. I'm going to use sign language. This is A, A, and this is sign language for B. That's all the sign language you need for now. So, so the blues lyrics have three lines. Right, The first line is something, line A, then we have line A repeats, right? You hear the same thing, maybe with a little twist, but basically the same thing. And then the third line is something totally different, line B. So you're going to hear that in the St. Louis Blues. Listen for these lyrics. Here's the first verse. We've got A, I hate to see the evening sun go down. I hate to see the evening sun go down. B, it makes me think I'm on my last go-round. Notice the rhyming scheme, down and round. Verse 2. Feeling tomorrow like I feel today. Feeling tomorrow like I feel today. Line 3 is B. I'll pack my grip and make my getaway. So grip is like a word for baggage, basically. I'll make my getaway. So listen for that. A, A, B, three lines with the rhyme scheme. Here we are, the St. Louis Blues, Bessie Smith singing, Louis Armstrong playing, 1925. Did you hear that? The A, A, B of the lyrics. That's an important feature of the blues. Three lines in the A, A, B pattern. So, all right. Now you're going to hear a few other blues artists talking about the blues. They're talking about Charlie Patton, who used to bang on the guitar strings to make sort of a percussive effect. And um, now the blues is all about expressing yourself, your emotions, your feelings, and sometimes you can't understand the words. You're going to hear one of the blues artists talking about that, how he heard music and even though he couldn't understand it, he still liked it because it still spoke to him. So try to understand these 
guys talking. Now, I think most of them are no longer with us. As you'll see, one guy was born in 1913, so quite a while ago. Um, but if you don't understand every word, that's okay too. Neither do I. So here we are, some old blues artists. People like Charlie Patton and him, they just might be taught down on the bass strings like this. I found this old rock record of Charlie Patton and the garbage. Well, you take your garbage because they had dumps. Well, you take your garbage. The, rebels, uh, the record was so warm. But I liked it then. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I liked it, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie was on. He could beat that guitar, beat all the paint off down there, man. He on that, he, he drumming and playing all the same time. Yeah, I knew there was something to this stuff, man. You know, although I couldn't understand what he was talking about, or saying, but it came out in the, in, in the music line, did that old, old, you know what I'm talking about? I said, oh, this guy done had a bad night. Well, I tell you, uh, I never did go around him too much. I went to some place where he played at, you know. And uh, he'd stand out door and listen to him because I was a little fella. <laughs> he wouldn't let me in the house. And uh, he'd play on stove porches, you know, like on the porch. And I'd go down and look at him, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was too little go into places, you know, where you were at. Yeah, I was young then. I was around about eight or nine or ten years old. Wow, so Pine Top Perkins, when he was eight or nine or ten, he was so young they wouldn't let him in, but he loved the music so much he would just listen from the front porch. Well, no discussion of the blues would be complete without Robert Johnson. Now, Robert Johnson, we don't know much about him. Basically, when he made his recordings back in 1936 and 37, it was just him and the guitar. But what he played was so amazing, so influential, that many others just loved his songs and wanted to play them. So we've got Robert Johnson singing the Crossroad Blues. Now listen for that A-A-B in the lyrics. We've got, I went to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. Went to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. Asked the Lord above, have mercy. Save old Bob, if you please. Bob, because he was Robert, so. All right, next verse. Standing at the crossroads, tried to flag a ride. Standing at the crossroads, tried to flag a ride. Didn't nobody seem to know me. Everybody passed me by. So here you are from 1936, Robert Johnson. Now, his name is misspelled in this video. It's J-O-H-N-S-O-N. -S -S so whoever did this YouTube video messed up. All right, Robert Johnson, Crossroad Blues. Now here's the part of class where we're going to get up close and personal with the blues. I'll show you some of the chords and the form of it and eventually how to make up your own blues lyrics because it's actually not that hard. So I'm going to do this one in the key of D. If you know what that means, great. 
If you don't, you know what? It doesn't matter, because a lot of the early blues artists didn't know how to read or write music either. And in fact, some of them were blind. So, just so you know, we're in the key of D. What it means that is, this is our Do. Do is the main note, right? And D on the piano, or on any instrument, in this key is the Do. All right, so but you do remember the triads, right? The triad is important. So the first triad is Do, Mi, So. If I play those together, those are the notes for what's called the one chord. And I can use that all the way through that first line of singing. Singing. That means I have to make up some blues lyrics right here on the spot. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's going to go something like this. Well, I'm uh, making up my lyrics. But I don't know what to say. That's the first A, right? See that? The one chord. Now let me just show you. On the piano, this is our Do, Do, Mi, So. That's the chord we're in, right? I use that pretty much for the whole first line. Now, when we go to the second line of lyrics, we're changing chords. Do, Re, Mi, Fa. I'll do it down the octave. That's called the four chord or the fa chord. There's one note, do, that's the same in both triads. So that's kind of cool. If you sing that note all the way through, that's going to be like the glue. So uh, how did it go again? It's, uh, oh yeah. Well, I'm making up my own lyrics, and I don't know what to say. That's the first A. Second A, we go to this chord. Well, I can use the same note. Making up my own lyrics. Don't know what to say. Well, that was pretty easy, right? A, A. Now, when we go to B, there's a whole different chord. This is chord number three, which we haven't heard yet. Ooh! So that's what's called the five chord, or the do, re, mi, fa. So it's on note number five, the so chord. All right. Now, the thing is, I can't sing do if I play that chord. Right? Here's a fast forward to the blues I just did. Making up more lyrics. Don't know what to say. Making up more lyrics. Don't know what to say. When I get to this, I can't go. Dumb. That just doesn't sound quite right. I gotta either slide it up or go down. It's, that that note is just not quite right. So I have to change it, which is kind of cool. You have to make a change for the phrase B, right? Because the lyrics are different too. Oh, now I'm stalling. I have to make up new lyrics. Um, let's see. I um, don't know what to say. Let's see. I'll do something like. Well, that's all right, folks, because this is the first blues of the day. See how I rhymed? See, I didn't put much of that thought into it, so I'm going to do that whole blues, and you'll hear what it is. It's first blues of the day is what I'll call it. All right. Here I go, I said. First blues, uh, making up my own lyrics. I don't know what to say. Second A. I'm making up more lyrics. Don't know what to say. Here's the B. Well, that's alright, folks, cuz it's the first blues of the day. So, just like that, instant blues. And you're gonna do that soon in just a second. Let me do one more example just to show you you don't need to be an expert poet to come up with something. So I'm going to look around. I've got this shirt on. So I'm going to do something about my shirt. All right. These maybe aren't the deepest blues lyrics either, but you'll get the point that you can take anything for the blues. All right. I was going to say something about actually cheated a little and wrote down some notes. So I kind of know what to say, but something about my favorite shirt, but I already forgot it. Oh yeah. This is going to be a happy blues. All right. Something like this. Oh, I'm so happy today. I'm wearing my favorite shirt. I'm so happy today. Wearing my favorite shirt. What's the B going to be? It's going to be something like, um, I hope I don't trip and fall in the mud, or it's going to be covered with dirt. So that was it. So something contrasting for line B. Now, what if we want a sad blues about the shirt? 
I could do something like, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah. So it's going to be something like this. Well, I'm not feeling so good today. Because I tripped and I got hurt. That's the A, second A. I'm not feeling so good today. Because I tripped and I got hurt. What makes me feel better? Well, that's okay, folks, because at least I'm wearing my favorite shirt. So that's the example of where you start out sad and then something lifts you up. It happens to be my shirt. Makes you feel happier. So that's all you have to do for the blues. You just make up line A, say the same thing, Think of something that rhymes with the end of it, and you've got your B. So now I'm going to give you some inspiration for your very own blues. The most important thing to remember about the blues is if it's from the heart, it's going to be right. So it doesn't really matter. You can write about something super happy if you're feeling great or super sad if you're feeling down. Um, and you don't even have to worry about if you want to try singing it. It doesn't even matter what note you sing. As long as it sounds good to you, it's going to be fine. Right? There's no rules. I can start on this note, do, if I want. Or I can start on the note above it. Well, I, na, 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 or I can start on a different note. Well, I'm feeling so. It doesn't really matter. If it sounds good, it's right. So the most important thing is the feeling and um, expressing that. So... Here's your inspiration. I'm going to get the harmonica up for even more inspiration. All right. And you're going to get a little bit of an intro. And then don't forget it's A, A, B. I'll try to cue you, but I'm not going to sing because this is your blues. All right. Here we go. time this time I'm not going to worry about cueing you I'm just going to play and if you want to write the same thing again test it out or something different doesn't matter all right here we are take two the blues <laughs> first blues ever. All right. Well, congratulations. Hope it was fun. Hope you learned a little something about the blues. And I could have gone on for two or three more hours, but I'm trying to keep it short. You can always use your spare time to search the blues on your own. So excellent. I'll see you all next week.